Welcome. Now, I trust all of you had a lovely lunch. I'm seeing a full room. Let me tell you about a little bit of what's going to happen now. Next speaker is going to be Andres Ozos that we had in the morning. He is in charge of the Latvian Investment Agency. He's going to introduce a few people that are actively involved with it. And they're going to tell you a few stories about Latvia and what founders can do here. That's pretty much what I'm looking forward to finding out. Now, again, my name is Gleb. I'm hosting, trying to keep this on time. One thing I'm going to ask you. Now, if you have a question, if you have something, please engage. We have a lovely box going to be thrown around. Please catch it and ask a good question. On this note, I would like to welcome Andris on stage. Now, Andris, please, hand of applause once again. Microphone. Thank you. Thank you, Gleb. Thank you, everyone, for being here and uh, obviously being interest, interested in what we are going to tell you. Why do we believe that uh, Latvia is a good place? big part of you is uh, who are here, of course, Latvians who know why we sincerely believe we are good. But we go international. We are also happy to be part of a major, larger ecosystem. But um, I tell you something. Uh, I sincerely believe that uh, this magnetic Latvia through years will express what um, we mean by that, that this country is good to prosper and not being a good, brilliant um, uh, birthplace for uh, individuals who go and reach success in the world. For instance, you are different here, very different, different industries. Also, one of our presentations will be why it's good to invest in Latvia, but you need investment yourself in your hopes, in your business plans. Why should you listen to that? I think uh, you should, because you should uh, also uh, understand why not only become a kind of an origin of ideas and then emigrate to United States and prosper somewhere else and then raise Latvian pride that uh, genetical Latvians succeeded in United States, but we really want that this country is also home for successful companies and not only origin of successful international companies somewhere else. So we really uh, think that uh, in Latvia, the efforts, and uh, my minister, Mr. Asher Radens, today also was kind of uh, summing up what uh, has been made good from the government's perspective. This is usually most irritating part, that the government again speaks something, and I also look like civil servant, and I am civil servant. Um, but um, I think that some homework has been done, a lot of homework to be done in the nearest future, and uh, very much uh, lies in the hands of uh, you, uh, those people who share same passion, uh, same, I would say, values and, uh, for instance, creativity as a value. Please, uh, just a little bit, uh, Gleb showed me how you are interacting and that it really works. Uh, who think, regardless of your profession and uh, what exactly you are doing, uh, that you are creative, either, either financial guys or... Um, being startups yourself, please raise hands. People who sincerely think your nature is creative, you're a creative person. Just not, once again, keep it, keep it, keep it, just a second. And please raise hands who are not creative. You are not creative, eh? Definitely not? Okay, may, maybe it's okay. Uh, I, I was giving once already this example that uh, in Sweden I was participating in a seminar where also people were asked about creativity and startup ecosystem requires a lot of presence of creativity. One guy didn't raise its hand and, and the moderator was asked, cannot be, aren't you creative? He said, no, I'm not, same like you. And he was like, what are you doing professionally? He said, I'm director of Swedish nuclear plant. <laughs> and then, then we said, it's okay, okay. you." <laughs> For you, oh, maybe it's okay. Later on, I'll ask you what you are doing. But again, uh, we will devote one presentation uh, why Latvia is good to invest, but by that we do not mean that you have a lot of money to invest, but why we believe that there is a reason that this country will prosper, this region will prosper. Sorry, Estonians and Lithuanians, um, our neighborhood uh, deserves it as well, but of course, I praise uh, my own country. I, um, uh, this is very, very logical, and thanks Textual for this opportunity. And uh, Olga will say what is good in startups, what is good in it for you. Uh, maybe 
uh, some part of the information sounds technical and again as you are diverse we cannot please everyone by saying perfect information just to you uh, those uh, individual consultancies are absolutely most welcome with anybody of LIA uh, or as in the future magnetic Latvia ecosystem and uh, and also uh, using this opportunity once again to remind that foreigners leaving through airport are kindly asked to visit Magnetic Latvia Lounge in the airport. This is already open. That's a beautiful place to talk about business and cooperation with Latvia. So uh, I didn't say myself the ideas why Latvia is attractive. I left this uh, element of show uh, to next speaker, please. Thank you again. Of course, I, I didn't introduce, I thought that um, I did, I mentioned Olga, because Olga was giving already one speech today, but uh, Rolando is a colleague of mine, uh, represents investment uh, department, uh, please uh, Rolando, uh, come to the stage, the floor is yours. By the way, <laughs> Rolando has a name where usually people expect that he's the typical foreigner, doesn't speak Latvian, he speaks perfect Latvian, he's an exception. Yeah, in this case, of typical of, foreigners, not exception for us. <laughs> in these cases, the state language council always, when they see me, they're like, looks like a fine. <laughs> but we will be punished, of course, for not, not respecting language law. Rolando, okay. Yes, thank you for the introduction. Thanks a lot. Uh, yes, so now you know my name is Rolando, a very typical Latvian name, as you know. Uh, but since now you know my name, I would like to know yours as well. But since we, we are quite a lot here, I think we should try out uh, some sort of experiment. Uh, I will count to three, and on the count of three, I would ask you, please, to say out loud your name and your surname so that I can hear. On the count of three. One, two, three. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Okay, so... I will try to speak uh, briefly about uh, what is it that we actually do in order to attract uh, foreign investors and, and, and how do we work with them, what is it that we do daily, because uh, everybody knows about the Latvian, about our investment and development agency of Latvia, we, everybody knows that we exist, that we work hard, but you don't, uh, most of you does, doesn't know uh, what is it actually, how do we do it, uh, either we do it behind the computer or so, or what, what, what's the point? Okay, and uh, also I'll tell about uh, what do we basically tell investors. And uh, of course here you see a very nice scenery of Riga. And why is this important? If the investor is going to come here to invest, he's going to live here. So he has to like it. He has to like it and uh, Riga pretty much helps it as well. You can see a very beautiful city with a, uh, with a great mix of traditional and with modern and a very vibrant country as such. So when people from bigger cities, from metropolises come to Riga, they are sometimes very uh, surprised about how green we are. And not only Riga, the Latvia, in, in Latvia as, a, as a country is a very green country. It's uh, more, more than 50% of Latvia is covered in forest, as you know, probably. And another cool thing about Riga is that uh, you can be here, you can be here and it takes about 20 to 30 minutes in a car and you're here already. About 580 kilometers of sandy beaches where you can walk uh, forever and even manage to find the meaning of life while walking these such long distance walks and so on. Okay, but uh, this is all uh, very nice, but the hard facts are also important as well. Uh, we usually can, we can speak about but Latvia is in a perfect geographical location between big markets such as the China, Russia, uh, European Union, Scandinavia and so on and Latvia is basically a perfect springboard to start a business if you want to enter these markets because as we know Latvia is not a very big country and usually when investors come here it's not like they are uh, very mm, so to say oriented to the to the local market because the local market is small but the location is perfect in order to access other markets as well. So uh, this happens. Everybody comes here. 
and uh, some other hard facts. So I don't, won't go into details in like the tax system or so on, but uh, we can brag that this year we have also introduced a very nice new tax, which is so small that you can barely see for quite obvious reasons, and because it's zero, so we have to zoom it in. <laughs> and uh, also, we are quite growing fast. Uh, this is a bit of a crazy number. And usually the countries, in, in your country, everybody complains about the tax system and that the taxes are too big and so on, but somehow we have managed uh, to be among the 13th most attractive tax policy. Uh, interesting, a pretty pleasant surprise, but it's cool. And how does this growth happen? Uh, some say that it's due to uh, recovery external of external markets due to export volumes increasing and so on. But behind it is, a, is actually quite a lot of work that locals put in. Because we strive to be as hardworking and unstoppable, just like this guy, for example, which you most probably know, or this guy also, who saw the fight about two weeks ago. Everybody who saw the fight, give a round of applause for him, because he definitely deserves it. An applause for such a beautiful fight. But uh, yes, since even we are so hard working, we try to be like that. Uh, you always have to be modest and humble. And uh, he's a perfect example of that. With this his daily job, for those of you who don't know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and coming back to the, to the hard facts part. Uh, usually we emphasize for investors that uh, these are our eight strategic sectors where we are quite strong either by experience, either by a perfect location or great infrastructure, or we just have a big potential as well. I will move to this side as well because I see some people don't... Uh, I'm covering the, the picture. And, but we want to see more and more companies and startups in all of these sectors, not only one or two or particular another sector, but in all of them. And uh, there are seven key stakeholders that work together in order to, f to make it happen. Well, when a big project, a strategic project is considering to come here and has some interest to come to Latvia, you have to work together as a team. You cannot do it solo. And teamwork is actually always key. And by seven st key stakeholders, I mean, of course, us, the Investment and Development Agency of Latvia, among with the, our foreign representatives all across the world, uh, also working together with the government, municipalities, universities, private sectors, and last but not least, the investor himself as well. So we have to work together as a team. And why? Because uh, every country has some problems. There, there is no country that is problem-free. You can tell that everything is okay, you can bluff that everything is okay, but I think that investors will like you much better if you are honest and you are ready to find a solution for this problem and work together with him. You can just gain his trust. And, uh, and all of this together creates actually something like a trademark, almost like a brand, which is this, Magnetic Latvia. And then we try to be as magnetic as possible. So all of this mixture that encourages our investors to live here, to invest here, and to also live, feel like home while living here and working here. But uh, of course, I could be saying all of these things and promoting like a salesman or so, uh, but I will not uh, do it. And uh, I think it's much more interesting to hear from the people themselves. So we were interested to know what was it that they actually liked about our country. And uh, we asked a number of people who are already successfully working here from various well-known international companies, from different uh, nationalities as well. And uh, here's what they had to, one of, here, here is one of the answers. Uh, Cava Corporation is a 130-year-old company uh, headquartered in Boston, Massachusetts. We have um, 43 manufacturing facilities in 21 countries around the world, and we're publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange. What we're doing here is we are, um, we are providing business services to our operations in Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. Those services include financial services, IT services, purchasing services, and customer services. Well, the very first time we, we came to Latvia was about 18 months ago, uh, but we've uh, been a registered company for about six months now. 
There was no one thing that was the deciding factor, but a combination, I would say, certainly the talent pool, the depth of the talent pool, the IT infrastructure, the growing service uh, capabilities within the country, and then the cost structure. What was also attractive to us was that uh, most of the countries we were looking at, we had to stop in Riga on the way. So th this uh, this was the, the first stop. Uh, the, the fact that they have their own airline is very attractive. Our goal was to hire 125 people in, in five months. And uh, all of the recruiting companies, most of the HR professionals thought that that would be impossible or impossible with, with any quality and uh, not only have we accomplished that, or we are 90% complete, uh, we have exceeded every expectation on the quality, the caliber, uh, the enthusiasm, and the ambition of these, of these young, very capable individuals. LIA has been great. They've been with me and our company every step of the way. They've facilitated our integration into Latvia, they have been our support network for the little stuff, such as where we should look uh, for, for an apartment, for instance, to the big stuff. How do we, um, how do we meet the prime minister and, and speak about certain things that we need, uh, as well as the bureaucracy of even visas and how we should apply for various uh, things. Now that we've been here for a while, without a doubt, it's the talent, it's the depth of the talent, the quality and the caliber of the talent. That's what Latvia has best. I'm Heather Ellis, Managing Director of Cabot Latvia. I've worked for Cabot for 27 years and I highly recommend investors to come to Latvia and see for yourself. Uh, I kind of felt that somebody wanted to applaud. If you want, then you can please applaud. <laughs> yeah, this is one uh, testimonial, but uh, I would like to speak about also some very recent examples. Uh, some of them which I've been working also myself on. And, uh, well, this is one uh, very recent example which you might have saw on the national television about two to three weeks ago in the news as well. It's a Chinese uh, research organization called BGI. Uh, it, BGI stands for Beijing Genomics Institute. And why am I telling this? Uh, the reason is because they are a very, very high-tech company that employs more than 50,000 ultra-qualified uh, biomedicine specialists all over the world. And it's quite a good message that they are coming here. They have decided to come here and to have their presence here. And by the way, they're hiring as well right now. And uh, we kind of caught their attention about one year ago. So we tried to do our best in order to convince them to stay here. And we worked very hard with them. And here are some pictures, about, uh, just some pictures, so that you get an understanding with what kind of guys do they work together. I, I guess you probably know this guy as well. He often visits them. But this guy also visited us. Here is also one and only Mr. Wozols with Prime Minister as well. And this was in October right here. And, uh, and I myself also managed to take a picture with him. Uh, I can be quite proud. But I will explain what is this all about. Uh, the group president of BGI, Dr. Wang, uh, he's actually one of the most prominent scientists in the world right now and a billionaire as well. But he doesn't care about uh, money. That's uh, that's for sure. And uh, when he was in Riga, uh, he, re he was given a presentation about Latvia as well. And after the presentation, he asked, is it true that your country is covered 50% forest? Something like that was his accent. Uh, I said, yes. Then he said, show me. <laughs> so I showed him. <laughs> I took him to the forest. Uh, it was mushroom season, actually. And... Uh, they were, you can see how excited they are about the mushrooms, all of them. And we stumbled up upon some local mushroom pickers as well, uh, who kindly gifted him this uh, basket of mushrooms. And uh, it was funny to see that uh, the local ladies, they have no idea that the, this funny, weird Chinese uh, old man is a, one, uh, is a billionaire and one of the best scientists in the world right now. And he took it for free. <laughs> 
And what he did with his afterwards, we went to a very nice restaurant in Riga to have a, a nice dinner. And he asked the chef, can you please cook this? <laughs> the chef said, yeah, no problem. And uh, this kind of, uh, actually these kind of things that show that you are a very, you're a very humble person and, and, and these kind of normal people things are pretty important because sometimes you can catch the investor's uh, attention and, and, and become liked by him just by that. If numbers are equal, then he will go to the one where he likes to spend time with or so on. If he likes the country, if he likes forest, yeah. And uh, when this guy, he's actually about 60 years old and when he was 55 years old, he climbed Mount Everest. And uh, he likes nature very much. So when we arrived at the forest, I'm not uh, exaggerating. He put like his uh, feet, like his foot, like this, started to stretch, and he started to warm up and run around. And so, hope I didn't break. And uh, he was happy like a child. <laughs> yes. Uh, but uh, the point being is that this kind of companies, they are coming to Latvia. They have decided to establish a presence here, and they have already decided to expand their operations here and we expect we have together with them successfully signed a memorandum about building a life science park in Latvia and why do I emphasize this because that would be a perfect hub for startups and that's what it is intended for so get to anybody who's interested in life sciences and ready to to try out their luck in life science uh, building a life science based startup Wait just a bit, Take, uh, have some patience, it, you can do it here afterwards. And quickly I will go through another story which uh, I have been recently working with, a company called Lehman's from the Netherlands. Uh, what you see here is actually a dam built in the middle of the sea and what are they doing? They are salvaging a World War II fighter plane right from the sea. So what they did is they built this dam and they drained the sea. I don't know how they did it, but they did. And you can see it uh, right here from up, for, from an aerial view. And this is inside the dam, where they drained the sea. They recovered some bombs. And what they do actually is they are a very specialized company with uh, a group of companies operating in logistics, railways, uh, lo uh, construction, and then... And, and environmental remediation, explosive handling, and so on. They are very wide specialists, and she they are working since total, right? 1928. They are quite old. So this is what they do, they recover. This is how they celebrate the new year with uh, the things that they have recovered. And uh, what, is, what are these pictures? This says, for those of you who, who don't speak Latvian, it says, military pollution, uh, dangerous to be in the forest. Um, mostly when we go, go around with investors, we tend to like uh, show them the nice spots or so of, uh, of the city or of the country. But these guys, since they work with environmental remediation, uh, the more polluted the place, the better it was. He was excited to walk around in, uh, in, this, in a forest or so. And, I, and since this forest is polluted with explosives, I had to purely rely on his expertise walking around behind him on the, in the forest. And uh, this is just a practical example that we work with investors together by going around uh, evaluating sites where they could set up, meeting with government officials, potential partners, and so on. And then and, and the last, well, what's the point of this picture? It's just a perfect example of networking. The guy who works at the, with this project used to be a, <laughs> a jewelry designer and actually quite big in the United States, and he had these kind of clients. So I didn't quite believe him, but he sent me this picture just as a proof. Rolando, on yes. this note, I would kindly ask you to give us one basic final line. The final line is that big companies are coming to this small country yeah. right here. And uh, various of them, they have different arguments why. For some, it is infrastructure. For some, it is like a perfect, perfectly skilled labor availability. And for others, it is a perfect accessibility. For others, it's just eagerness. And we try to keep all of these, we try to show all of, show all of these factors quite regularly. Last year, for example, we organized the startup festival Inovus. This year, we expect at September 1st you to be there with the brightest minds among startups as well and to have a party as well.
All right. On that note, guys, a hand of applause for Rolando. Yeah. Thank watch you more very stories much. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Now, our next speaker is going to be a colleague and a, again a chief instigator. Startup. Chief, chief instigator. startup instigator at the Latvian Investment Agency. She is going to be engaging you. She's going to be asking a lot of questions and she's going to be talking what the, about the practicalities, what the agency can do for companies in this region and in Latvia. Please welcome Olga Barreto Gonzalez. Thank oh, you very much. The last name, the, the full one. <laughs> I attempted the full one. Thank you very much. <laughs> hey, hello. Missed me? <laughs> um, any of you actually listened to me in the morning presentation? Anyone? Okay, so you're officially enrolled into my fan club. Okay. What about the others? I would like to understand, uh, do we have here startups? Please raise your hands. Mm -hmm. Good. Do we have investors? Great. We, okay. Both works just fine. Um, very unrelated question. Uh, anyone very keen on blockchain cryptocurrency? All right. There is a TechChill hackathon which will be organized uh, this, this weekend. Uh, so February 10, 11, you might apply for that it's, it's, if it's of any interest. Uh, yes, I was just, you know, asked to, to just uh, throw it at, at, the, at the audience. But uh, yeah, let me just go back to... to, to what I'm actually doing here and, and what I will be telling you today about. Uh, I will be talking about really the startup support which is provided by the government of Latvia. And uh, I will try to keep it, yes, as interactive uh, as I can. Well, Gleb put a very high benchmark on that, but I will try not to disappoint him. So yes, my name is Olga and I'm the chief startup instigator and uh, as an agency, Investment and Development Agency of Latvia, we are trying to become a one-stop shop for, uh, for startups, local and those who would like to come here and, and register their, their business here. Uh, so that we are trying to become that one single door through which every single startup is welcome to come and ask for any information they would like to have regarding uh, business environment or other, other things like, I don't know, uh, all the life-related questions as well. So this is more or less the, the welcome pack which Latvia has prepared for, for startups and which I will be talking in, in detail about. Uh, again, a short question. Does any of this sound familiar or something like we've heard it all, we've heard it, you know, anyone? All right, yeah, so, and actually, yeah, you're right. It does sound familiar to some extent because several countries, okay, are doing that. But uh, I also hope to surprise you with some interesting things which uh, not necessarily anyone else is doing at the moment. So I will start with uh, something very heard already, something uh, other people are also doing. So it's a startup visa. So Latvia has it and when we talk about startup visa we mean temporary residence permit which actually is much better than just a visa and the process of application is very simple and we help in the process uh, there are some turbulences uh, perhaps if you are staying for the next talk we are having with with Alex who is sitting over there to know what the hell he's doing in Latvia and how come how come he even arrived here we will talk about that as well and then shortly about what programs our agency run at the moment to uh, help startups and aspiring entrepreneurs to thrive. So we have an innovation motivation program and this program is designed for wannabe startups, wannabe entrepreneurs and just you know creative minds. The program um, the goal of the program is inspire and to ignite some action. So basically uh, we run some hackathons in various uh, topics. Uh, there are also some seminars in design thinking and whatnot. So it's, it's really for those who would like to have a flavor of the entrepreneurship. And then probably we are coming to the best part of it. So startup law, which you know today uh, has been mentioned quite a few times. Have you heard about startup law in Latvia? Anything at all? Oh, I like when people actually, you know, 
do this because then I'm really pumped up and to, to explain what it is about. So Startup Law was passed a little bit more than a year ago and it was a beautiful signal to the ecosystem that the government is there, the government wants to support. And uh, so basically the uh, Startup Law offers three types of uh, support mechanisms to all startups which register in, in Latvia and which qualify. And the first benefit, the first support mechanism is fixed social tax, right? So as a startup, you can then save some money by paying the fixed, by paying fixed flat uh, tax in, in, instead of the regular one. And then uh, the next perk is no income tax, both individual and corporate. So this is completely waived for, for startups, which again helps uh, to save uh, quite a bit of money the third, and probably, I mean, my personal best and my personal favorite is uh, the, the co-financing of talent. Uh, so, um, as we all know, in the early days for startups, the larger cost might not be, you know, office or cars or equipment, but it's the team, it's the brains, it's where all the competence and, and uh, is, is concentrated. So yes, if you qualify, the government pays back 45% of the cost of the employee to, to, the, to the startup, right? Which is, again, we can talk pretty large numbers here. So this is as far as the, as the startup law is concerned, right? And then another juicy part uh, of, of the welcome pack, that's the the money, the cash, right? So at the moment, um, the government has uh, launched and uh, released uh, 15 million uh, euro in acceleration funds. So it's made available as we speak. So the 15 million euro were given to three fund managers to, to manage. And soon they will be uh, opening the call for proposals from startups. So we are talking early stage, pre-seed and, and seed. And then, as a natural progression, there will be 60 million euros available uh, for growth uh, and next stage uh, of, 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 the, of the startups. So, yes, combined 75 million, this is the number you need to be taking away from this presentation. Another thing, our agency runs business incubators, uh, 14 actually business, and they're spread all over the country. Our small, but yet, you know, nice country. And one is uh, dedicated to creative industries. And it's actually located here in Riga. And the program, uh, there are two programs, so pre-incubation, six months, again, you know, to, to taste the entrepreneurship as such, to, to, to see if, if, if you have guts for that. And another incubation, full-scale four years program. And then another thing is innovation vouchers. Anyone has ever heard about this one? No? Yes? No. Okay, good. I like this. So something for me to tell you about. It's a very straightforward program, right? And it's uh, thought, okay, for and designed both uh, for startups, but also for all other SMEs, traditional conventional businesses. So the program, as I said, straightforward. Uh, as I was explaining earlier today, uh, you have a point A and point B. This is the product you have, and this is the product you want to you want to achieve. And the distance equals uh, uh, the innovation, right? So this is the tool which will help you uh, achieve B point. So uh, our agency co-finances 60% of this whole event of this whole project and it's uh, 25,000 uh, euro max. So the rest comes from your side, so this will be 40%. Another thing is outreach support. So as agency, we are really you know, eager to make ourselves visible and bring along our startups, obviously. Any of you heard maybe the rumors or saw the video of us launching the space in San Francisco at WeWork? Right, so some of you have. Today is actually a very yeah, happy moment when we were showing the video uh, earlier, uh, earlier today. 
So this is exactly the type of interventions we are aiming at. We want to go global, we want to build bridges from Latvia to you know, all over the world, different continents, that's the, that's the ambition. Uh, some people might uh, you know, be skeptical, some people might not believe it, but this is the direction we are headed to, that's a given. So we are building these strategic partnerships, uh, like for instance, uh, yeah, we mentioned San Francisco, and we are attending different international events. So yeah, we want to be noisy, loud, and uh, we do have some resources for that, so, so why not to? Another thing, we are building the informative uh, information portal, which is Startup Latvia, right now under, under construction. That's another project uh, or mini project of our agency. Uh, and it will basically cater um, to mostly foreign uh, startups, foreign investors and the foreign stakeholders who want to know more about what our country has to offer and why to even relocate here, if ever. Right, uh, I guess last but uh, not bad at all is the fact that uh, as an agency we would like to support science. While as you might know, more than half of our startup ecosystem is in one way or another dedicated to fintech, uh, as an agency we also would like to see the so-called deep tech growing, right? And along with these lines, we support uh, science and support science commercialization. So there's a whole program running when we are scouting for interesting uh, scientific uh, you know, research ideas and so on, and then we try to bring them to the market. It's a very complicated process. We are learning by doing. We actually have here some colleagues running this program. If you have any questions, just you know, let me know. I will connect you with them. I believe I came to, yeah, to the conclusion of my presentation. I wanted to mention uh, two more things. Um, you, like on your way out, but I, I hope you will uh, stick around uh, for a longer time, you absolutely must drop your calling card, your, your, your business card, in a fishbowl type of looking thing, which is, do you see that? Okay, so yeah, because tomorrow as we close this stage, we will be having a raffle and we have prepared some uh, interesting, you know, Latvian products, uh, prizes for you. So for instance, uh, I will announce one at the moment. Uh, it will be a, a very, you know, like uh, nicely looking and I hope nobody will get it so I can get it a kind of bad as wooden watch. So you believe me, you want that. So please, calling card there, no spam, guaranteed, but only relevant information. And another, actually, my last question, who will be flying out uh, of Latvia this weekend, Saturday or Sunday? Anyone at all? All right, so for those of you who are flying out of the country on February 10 or 11, you have a unique chance to see me at the airport <laughs> because we are launching a magnetic Latvia lounge there. It will be a permanent lounge, but yes, this weekend, since we figured many people will be flying from Tekchil back home or elsewhere, uh, we would you know, need to be there and, and offer our time to you. Hopefully you will drop by. I heard there will be good coffee. So thank you. If you have any questions, please feel free. Gleb, do we have time for questions? We, you're early, which is very good. First of all, hand of applause sorry. for this lovely lady for putting all the work. Thank you very much. Now, if you have questions, we have a box that you can catch. And I'll kindly grab it. So who has another question for Olga, guys? All right, I have a question for you. Will you make me pitch again? I'm not going to make you pitch again. I'm going to be nice to you this time. <laughs> um, now, you guys are doing a lot. You, you have the Magnetic Latvia brand. You know, you're going to airports, you're making sure founders have everything they need. But what sort of founders are you actually looking for in, in terms of exact terms? What does Latvia need specifically? Are you looking high tech, uh, classic mechanical engineering type of stuff? Are you looking for software type of things or brick and mortar businesses? What is the key thing? Who are the founders? Right, Gleb, you know, the answer, a very simple answer to that would be everyone, really everyone, because Everyone intelligent, everyone daring, everyone who can fit into our, you know, dynamic uh, mm -hmm. ecosystem. So I will not give you a specific profile because, yes, I mean, we have our fintech um, ecosystem being, you know, quite strong. 
But uh, I would not say that we are supporting only that. Uh -huh. We are supporting also deep tech, as I was mentioning. This is, of course, also something interesting for us. Uh, IoT, biotech, and I mean, you name it. We are open for everything. We are actually creating a platform and environment which is fit to everyone because it all boils down to business environment when you, when you need to make business, right? So you had so 75 million, if I recall correctly? Sorry? You had around 75 million in funding? Right, 75 million funding, yes. So how is that going to be distributed potentially? 15 acceleration, so five, five, five. Got it. Three different fund managers. Yeah. Well, yes, they do have some preferences when we speak about industry. Yeah. So one of them is really focused on deep tech. And cool, cool, it's cool. in line uh, with, with our own interest. Yeah. Another one is uh, more into, yes, IoT, green tech, and everything which goes there. And... Uh, the third, um, I'm yet to actually learn more about it, but it's also cool. along the digital technologies, yes. Got it, got it. Now we're going to have a two-minute break until we set up the stage again, and I believe you will have Alexi, if I'm not mistaken, from yes, CryptoBot. Yes, you will see me again in the what the hell am I doing here fireside, uh, fireside chat. chat. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Two-minute break until we set it up, and we'll be back shortly. Let's do it.